Now we move on to the next reaction. This reaction is you must be familiar with. This reaction we have studied already in the chapter of hydrocarbon. This is hydration of alkyne. Now you must be knowing this because we studied this reaction in the chapter of hydrocarbon. When we studied alkyne, we studied this reaction as the reaction of alkyne. If I have any alkyne, suppose if I have propyne, and I carry out the hydration of this propyne, we take HgSO4, basically HgSO4 acts as a catalyst and uh, Hg here helps in initiating the reaction. Uh, because if, if Hg plus 2 helps in breaking this one of the pi bond and this pi bond is used in making a making a intermediate in which the pi the electronic density the the electronic cloud is utilized in making a three member ring with hg plus 2 as one of the member so the pi bond is already broken so that when h plus approaches this alkyne then the electronic density is already much diffused and that diffused electronic density easily goes into the orbital of hydrogen so the rate of reaction increases even if we don't take hgso for the reaction will still occur and the product would be the same but the rate would be considerably less. So this Hg plus 2 is just used to increase the rate of reaction. And the product here would be ketone. Here it would be acetone. In general, the product would be ketone. Now how this happens, we saw, but very quickly I'll tell you how this happens. Here, the first step would be H plus will approach this alkyne and will ask for electron and one of the carbon will give its electron. So one of the carbon will be devoid of the electron. So the carbon that will be devoid of electron will generate plus charge and plus charge should be generated on a inner carbon because the inner carbon will have more facility of electron stabilization by inductive effect and by hyperconjugation. This methyl is electron stabilizing group. And this methyl can have its electron stabilization on this carbon. So carbon number one, two. Carbon number two will like to have plus charge. So this S plus is going to go to carbon number one. So in the first step of the reaction, we have seen this before, so I'm, I'm a little quick to do this. This is the first step of the reaction. In the next step of the reaction, water molecule comes in and gives its electron to this poor carbon. And then oxygen forms a bond with carbon, in turn oxygen gains a plus charge and that plus charge oxygen loses when it, this is what we will have. The plus charge on oxygen we can be, dis, we can, we can dispense off by removing this H plus, any, any, any electrophile, any nucleophile present in the system, the H plus is coming out of a acid because there has to be a acid that acid will ionize to give us H plus and A minus. There has to be a counterpart of this H plus. There has to be a conjugate base present in the system. So this conjugate base will abstract the H plus from here and then we'll have a this H plus will go from here, the plus charge will go from here. So we'll have a neutral OH and this is an enolic form and as usual this will tautomerize very quickly to give the keto form. And this, the keto form will be reported as a final product because that is the 99% of this equilibrium is constituted by this ketonic form because it is very stable because it has C double bond O. So this is the final product and we have, we know this reaction, we learned this reaction in the chapter of hydrocarbon. But nevertheless, it, this reaction can be used for preparation of ketone. And the C double bond O is on inner carbon. So this, in this case, we have ketone. We don't have aldehydes. All alkyne will result in a ketone except for ethyne. For ethyne, if we have, because there are only two carbon. So both are symmetric. 
C double bond O will be on any one of them. When C double bond O is on one of them, then because there is no other carbon on the other side of this carbon, so this has to be an aldehyde because they cannot, they are not three, there are only two carbons. So C double bond O has to be on one of them and there is no three carbons. So on one side you have one carbon, on the other side you don't have carbon, that results in an aldehyde. But if you have a higher alkyne, if it has at least three carbon, then that, like, like in this case, then that will result in a ketone. So all alkynes will result in ketone except for the lowest possible alkyne, that is ethyne. So in general, it will give us both alkyne, both aldehydes and ketones, but aldehyde will come out of only ethyne and all other alkynes will give us ketone. So this turns out to be a method of preparation of ketone. All right. Similarly, another reaction that we have already studied is hydroboration. oxidation. Now hydroboration oxidation we studied first time in the chapter of hydrocarbon and then we studied again for the method of preparation of aldehyde. Now when we studied method of preparation of aldehyde I taught you that when there's a terminal alkyne then hydroboration oxidation result in an aldehyde. Because hydroboration oxidation is a kind of anti Markovnikov addition. And the step we know, we studied this reaction in detail in the chapter hydrocarbon. We again revised this reaction when we studied pre preparation of aldehyde. Now in, I'm not going to teach you again this in very detail. But the idea is boron has an empty orbital and the pi bond of this triple bond, this goes into the one of the bond, one of the pi bond, the electronic density from one of the pi bond goes into the empty orbital. So one of the carbon will start to form a bond with this boron. So the other carbon will generate a plus charge. So this carbon, which is the inner carbon, will gain a plus charge because of a stability from this R group. So the X terminal carbon, terminal carbon will form a bond and the internal carbon will generate a plus charge like this because if the bond is broken and that electron is going into the orbital of this carbon, this carbon pass on, passes on that electronic density into boron. So boron will develop a negative charge because it is gaining electronic density from outer source and this carbon is devoid of its electron so this carbon will generate a plus charge. Now this boron will lose H- minus. when it loses H- minus, this will become neutral, this will be neutralized and that H- minus comes and attack this carbon. So this carbon will now be neutralized because C plus and H- minus will form a bond. So this carbon has one hydrogen, the C double bond C will remain intact and this boron is again becomes neutral and one hydrogen it loses, so it becomes BH2. The same thing will happen with another alkyne. So again one more alkyne is going to give its electron to boron, then one more hydride is going to come out, then one more alkyne is going to give its electron, one more hydride is going to come out. So one BH3 molecule is going to react with three alkynes. When it, this comes out, the high, OH part from this H2O2, when, when, when th the reaction completes with three alkynes, so I'm removing off three hydrogen. So this part is going to come from three alkyne, right? So we have seen this before. Now, now this part is going to react with this H2O2 is going to break and form OH dot and because of bulkiness this bond will also break and OH dot will combine with this C dot and one of more OH dot coming from H2O2 will combine from B dot. So BOH3 is going to come out and from this part This is what we are going to get, right? Right. 
So now this will result in an aldehyde. You can, as you can see, this is an enol form. When you tautomerize this, it will become keto form. So now in the terminal carbon, you can see the terminal carbon is attached with oxygen in enol form. So the terminal carbon will be attached to oxygen in the keto form as well. So C double bond O is going to occur on terminal carbon. So that is going to give us an aldehyde. This is when there is a this is a terminal alkyne. When this is not a terminal alkyne, instead of this hydrogen, there will be a R group. So instead of this hydrogen, there will be a R group. Instead of this hydrogen, there will be a R group. Instead of this hydrogen, there will be a R group. So what happens then? Now, if you have, if you don't have a terminal hydrogen, this hydrogen is not there. What we have is, A group like this. So now when you convert this in all form into keto, when this totem arises, so this R group is going to be with this carbon. So no, this is no more, the C double bond O is no more on a terminal carbon. This is on an internal carbon. This gives us a ketone. Right, so the discussion, the bottom line of the discussion is when there's a terminal alkyne, then hydroboration oxidation results in an aldehyde. When it's not a terminal alkyne, this will not result in an aldehyde. This will result in a ketone. That's it. Now let's solve a conversion problem.